Got my guy, Ted Scott, one of the best caddies on tour. He's gonna caddy for me on this par five. Watching my steps like I was James Harden. Guarding me as like Garden Jordan, you can't afford it. I shoot like Wardell in clutch moments. Regardless my opponents, I try to keep it honest as I write these little sonnets under wraps like my name Adonis. My daughter Nix, like her name Adonis. I keep it straight as an orthodontist. Never become pompous, that's my promise. I'm conscious of the garden where my fruit tends to harvest. Yeah, yeah. Skating on tracks like I'm Sidney Crosby. Uh. Aim left. So watch this. I want you to aim left and, and bowl for me in a practice swing. So aim left and try to hit me with the club. Bowl, like you're a bowler, a right-handed bowler. Okay. How you gonna bowl? Yep, like this. Okay. Get the club low back there in the downswing. Get it low and then high up here. That's right. That's that's straight for you. Okay. So you're going to aim left and try to be a bowler. Okay. Aim left, swing right. That's your new thing. Aim left. Swing to the right. That's right. Swing to the right. Let the, let the club, club face close when you do that. Bro. Wow. I should teach this game. <laughs> How good was that? Wow. That was sweet. There we go. Thank you. That's so good. Right. Uh, awesome. Where's your clip? Yeah. That's my job. I'm going yeah. to for you. Wait, I got to get used to that. You got, come on, just relax a little bit. You know, let's go for a stroll. A little nervous. Let's go for a little stroll. And so a lot of people that watch my channel are probably football fans, right? Uh, friends and family, and not, a lot of them don't actually watch golf. And they see a guy that's always carrying a bag, but they probably don't know their particular role. So yeah. uh, what is your role as a caddy? Well, one of my good caddy friends calls us an outdoor butler. So you basically... Mm -hmm. A servant at heart you know uh, in the Bible Jesus is the master and he came to serve so it's mm. a servant role we're trying to fill gaps we're trying to carry stuff keep clubs clean mm. get yardages do strategy uh, but probably the biggest role we have is to try to make our player feel confident and comfortable mm. you know and that's different for every player and different every day some yeah. days we wake up and we don't feel good or we mm. feel anxious some days we feel great so as a caddy it's almost like you're a poker player trying to read your guy and going mm. What does he need today? And if you can fill that gap, then he's going to perform well. So yeah. there's a lot that goes into it. Uh, it's, it's all subtle stuff. Uh, I try not to take any credit for his success because mm -hmm. obviously he's the one with the skills. But mm -hmm. just want to basically encourage those skills to come out. Yeah. And like I said, I think First Thessalonians 5.11 says, therefore encourage each other and build each other mm -hmm. up just as you're doing so, man. So it's Amen. awesome that you get to provide that also yeah. while counting, not just in the game of golf, but Absolutely. in the game of life too. So. Uh, so typically on tour, you guys aren't allowed to use your range. You got yeah. the books, right? Yeah. So, yeah, we're not on tour right now. How do you use this thing? Oh, it's, <laughs> hang on. It's, uh, which way does it go? There we go. <laughs> you press the little red button on top. Is that, what, is that how it works? 180. Okay. Yep. Okay, so this is interesting because uh, obviously if I'm catting for Scotty, this is like, mm -hmm. I'm not even worried about the water. Yeah. But one mm -hmm. of your tendencies is to fade the ball. Yeah. And so... As, a, as an amateur, one of the worst ways to increase your score, not decrease your score, mm -hmm. is to lose strokes to the pond, mm -hmm. okay? So we have to decide, like, how comfortable am I hitting this shot that I can keep it left of the water? And if mm -hmm. I'm not, then maybe what we do is lay up short of it and our, hit our next shot, you know, even though it's only 180 yards. Because really, anything that's left of the water, yeah. you have a chance to have three more shots to make a par. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of how I look at it. Let's go short. I mean... I, I want to see you go for it just because it's fun. The wind's off the right. But I'm saying if we were playing for score, yeah. let's go ahead and, and, and just think through it and make sure that we're doing the right thing. But, hey, we're just having a little fun segment here. You know what? I want to see you hit the best shot of your it. life. Let's go you for know? it. Let's you go for it. You a great shot to get here. So. You're right. All right. You said 180? Yeah. So we're going to aim at the pin. Even though there's bunkers and stuff, Yeah. we want to get kind of far away from the water. So go right at the pin. Okay. And we're going to think, hey, aim left, swing right, close the face. That's your, that's your tip. Close the face when you do that. Yep. Good. That's a nice shot. So we're like, you know, I'd say five yards left of the green, down in the valley. Okay. That's perfect. You know, yeah. you're a good chipper, you're a yeah. good putter. So now when we get down here, you're going to see that what kind of short game shot do we have and how much risk do we want to take in that. Mm. But basically, golf is, is a game of eliminating risk, eliminating the bad. It's really not how good you play, it's mm. how good you miss the ball. It's how, it's how yeah. much risk you can eliminate. So yeah. uh, too many amateurs just give up shots, you know, in the ways I'm like, man, if that guy would just not play that club off the tee or aimed a little more left, you, you could eliminate some really bad scores. So mm. let's go see where you ended up. Awesome. I mean, you're in a place where you can score and, and it's like a score for you as a par, right? So, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's where Amateurs are like, I want to make a birdie. Yeah, mm -hmm. so do the pros, but first thing is to not make a double or a bogey, right? Yeah. So if we hit it over here to the left, yeah, there's trouble, there's sand traps, there's mm -hmm. a grass bunker. Obviously, the water's there. It's a pretty narrow target from 180 yards, Yeah. even for someone that's a really good golfer. So 
for you, this was a great shot. It was mm. like, hey, aiming at the pin, I pulled it a little bit. Yeah. Now we're down here where we can score. So, yeah. so here's how I would like to approach this. Okay. As your caddy, I would say, okay, obviously I've seen you chip a little bit now, mm. and you got pretty good chipping motion. Um, so what we want to do is, uh, we want to we want to walk up here okay. and assess what we got, right? So we come up here and go. All right, I'm going to ask you a question. If I go at the pin, do I have more green, or if I go right at the pin, do I have more green to? Yeah, more green right here. That's right. Right. And the other thing is, is if I go at the pin, it's kind of almost sloping away. Mm. And one of the things that you've said is like, man, when I hit my chips, they tend to run Roll out. Up, yeah. So if you aim at the pin and land it on the green, it's probably going to roll over. Pass the green. it. Yeah. And we would love for you to have a birdie putt. Yeah. It'd be a, if, if I said to you on the tee, hey, I'm going to walk up and put your ball 20 feet away for a birdie. You're, at your level of golf, you're going, Yeah. I'm in. Sign yeah. me up. Green and Rick. Let's go. So yeah. what we want to do is create a big catcher's mitt for you. Mm -hmm. So we're just trying to aim at this big area right here. And if you hit a nice chip and it rolls out, now we got about a 10-footer. Yeah. So that's how you want to think through your shots. And the other thing is if you miss hit it a little bit mm -hmm. and end up kick. a little short, it's still a pretty easy par. Yeah. But if I hit a great shot and it goes over into the rough, now I've got another tough shot. Yeah. And I'm just adding one after the other. Yeah. So that's where your score starts to really increase. Got you. That makes sense? Yeah. Now, Ted, obviously you're very knowledgeable in golf. And I've seen at your best you were a plus four handicap. Did you ever have aspirations to be a tour pro? You know, I turned pro to teach golf, but um, mm. A friend of mine, I was playing really well, and he said, you should try to play. And so that's kind of, it was more his idea than mine. And I, I was like, yeah, that sounds like a fun idea. And then I went to Caddy just to try to learn on what I needed to work on as a player. And I pretty quickly realized those guys are so much better than me. And even when I got to a plus four, I mean, when I worked for Bubba, he was probably like a plus seven or a plus eight. Mm. I think Scotty was probably a plus eight or a plus nine. Yeah. So, you know, the best I ever was was still four shots away from those guys. Mm -hmm. So you're like, yeah, I'll just yeah. stick to Caddy. <laughs> These guys are really good. Gotcha. All right. Big catcher's mitt here. Yep. Big target. Yep. Nice and comfortable. Beautiful. So good. Nice. And see, when we get up here, you're going to love this because you're going to get up here. And yeah, if you'd have hit that yeah. at the pin, that would have been tight. You didn't yeah. have had a two-footer. But mm -hmm. I'm going to say that you probably wouldn't hit as good of a shot when you give yourself a small target like that. Yeah. The reason why is because you don't believe you're going to do it. Mm. Like if you think, hey, I'm going to stick it at this pin. Yeah. You're like, ah, it makes you more nervous. But yeah. when I give you a big target, you're mm -hmm. free to just kind of, hey, I got some room for error. Absolutely. And then you hit a great shot. And now, guess what? We got a 10-footer for birdie. Yeah. I mean, awesome. you haven't had a 10-footer for birdie yet. <laughs> as soon as I start caddying, it's so weird how that That's coincidence, true. you know. Is that a coincidence or is it just me, guys? You know, anyway. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about reading greens. Okay? okay, how do you read greens? With your eyes or with your feel? With my eyes. Okay. Okay, yeah. Okay. So I, I just, try to do that, but I don't really feel as much as I want. Okay. Yeah. You're okay to do that with your eyes. So here's what I want you to notice. Okay. I want you to notice how it's shiny this way. And when mm. you look to the left, dark. it's dark. Mm -hmm. Okay. So grass grows typically downhill. Mm -hmm. So when you see it shiny, we know the grass is growing that way. So we know the slope's probably going that way. Mm. But let's just do this without even, let's just walk to the side. And is it darker, a little bit darker on this side? I is am kind of colorblind, so I'll okay. let you know that now. But right here? It's a little darker, right? Okay. Now yes. let's go across this right. side and look this way. Okay. And it's a little shinier. Ah, okay. Yeah, Okay, yeah. so Good that means shades. when it's shinier, the grass is growing away from you. So this means this putt is going fast that way mm -hmm. and fast this way. Mm. So this putt ought to roll out and break a little right. Break a little right. Okay. Okay, so the, the, just, the, just the way the grass grows can kind of give you some clues if you're not sure. So would you say left cup here? Well, second right. You're the player, so I'm going to let you see it the way you see it. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, I would say probably about two balls out on the left, something like okay. that. Okay. Awesome. I've been wrong a bunch of times, so <laughs> don't, don't, don't trust me. <laughs> Look at this guy. Mm. Oh, gosh. It just stayed right there. Yeah. What a great effort. I thought you had that. <laughs> Beautiful. Take a par, man. So one of the things that, that I would like to do, and, and I know you said you're not good at it, especially if you, if you have trouble seeing is I'd love for you to start learning how to use your feet. Yeah. And, and most people think they don't know how to use their feet because they really don't understand how simple it is. So yeah. let's, let's just do this for just a second, okay? If you just stand right here for a second, tell me, do you feel anything? Just mm. stand right there. Do you feel like you're standing on fl flat ground? Yeah, yes. right? Yeah. So I mean, you yeah. don't feel anything, right? No, I don't. And so if you're standing on flat ground, what should the ball do? Go straight. What did your ball do? Well, uh, okay, yeah. It yeah. didn't break, right? Yeah. So we, we played for it to have a little break, mm -hmm. but it didn't break. Yeah. So so we come here and we go, yeah. Now watch, come stand right here. Just come stand right here and tell me if you're on flat ground. Whew, man. 
this way? That's right. So okay. now watch. I'm going to roll this ball right here on that line, okay, and watch where the ball does. South turn. So mm. oftentimes in golf, the, the architects try to trick you with a mound behind the green, and especially where you wow. live in Phoenix where it's like, you know, they say everything breaks towards the valley, but really the whole golf course usually slant, slopes away from the mountains, and then they trick you with the little – Wow. So your eyes are like, oh, this is going this way, but it's really not because you're still on this slope, but it looks like you're not. So visually that can mess with you. But when sometimes with your feet, you can just walk up and be like, man, I walked, I walked my whole life. I know, I know what straight is. And oh, this is going this way a little bit. Yeah. So I can feel that's going a little bit left. Yeah. And so if you come put this putt, it should go just barely to the left. And that's, you know, I don't know how much yet. We don't have to dial it in, but let's just be confident to see if that's what happens. Should go a little left on you. So right cup. Yeah. It go a little left. Yeah, it did. So, wow. and it's just it's just something that's your instinct. It's actually your yeah. God taught you how to walk. He gave mm. you the the balance to walk. So when you're walking and you feel slope, like man, if I'm walking to my putt and I'm walking really fast, like whoa, then I know it's probably an uphill putt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If I'm going to my putt and I'm, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm walking uphill to my down, putt, down it's field. probably gonna be down. fast. So yeah. like your brain kind of picks up on those nuances. So from now on, when you're playing, I would love to see you get a little bit more feel oriented, mm. maybe a little less eyes, use your eyes too, but kind of just feel what the slopes are doing and kind of get a feel for it. Cause that's really what makes a great putter. Not necessarily using your feet to read greens, but just understanding that I want to dial in all the senses I have yeah. to read putts. Absolutely, man. Hope that makes sense. Absolutely, man. Appreciate you caddying for me. Yeah, that was fun. Thanks, thanks, the thanks man. for the opportunity. Father God, Tess God, please also like and subscribe. We'll see you guys. <laughs> hey, I got a real par. I watched it, bro. Yeah, I had a 10 for birdie, man. Yeah, I had a 10 for birdie, bro. Yeah, I, I, but bro. hey, 